Now, it is International Migrants Day today. It's a day to recognize the contributions of millions of migrant workers all over the world. Now, the promise of a well-paid job in a wealthy country is a very powerful draw, and many leave their hometowns and travel to foreign lands in search of a better life. Globally, there are some 232 million people living outside of the country of birth. It was uh, about 175 million in the year 2000. Now, Singapore is no different. There are about 1.3 million migrant workers here, and many groups here have organized activities for them over the weekend. The Migrant Workers Centre, for example, held festivities and concerts at recreation centres and at dormitories. So, to tell us more about this is Chairman of the Migrant Workers Centre, Mr. Yeo Guak Kwang, who joins me in the studio. So, Mr. Yeo, thank you very thank you much for coming in today. So, let's start with the alcohol ban we just heard about. It's going to be extended for another six months in Little India. Uh, what are your views on the recalibration of these measures? The Migrant Workers Centre's uh after these announcements, we have already actually contacted all our partners, particularly dormitory associations of Singapore, to see uh, what we can put up uh, as a social activities uh, for all the migrant workers over the weekend. Uh, I'm quite glad that uh, so far we've received very positive uh, response from all the uh, dormitory operators, so they will be putting in place uh, some uh, sports games, as well as movie screening and variety show uh, to actually protect the uh, activities for the workers over the weekend. So, uh, Mr. Yeo, you know, looking at the bigger picture, how do you propose getting foreign workers a bit more familiar with the laws here in Singapore? Because it's not just about, you know, a drinking issue. They need to understand uh, how our laws work as well. No, I think it's challenging. We have to just continue to uh, enhance our communications and engagement program with all the migrant workers, uh, knowing that they all come from different culture and background. Uh, more importantly, we have to get them to understand that uh, public security is the top priority for us and that no one uh, should actually commit any uh, criminal act. Um, so we will actually try to reach out to all of them. Uh, we have actually uh, print uh, plastic cards with our helpline number to um, enable them to know that whenever they have any issue, particularly if they have any dispute at the workplace, they should come to us instead of taking matters in their own hand. So 1.3 million migrant workers here in Singapore and your centre right now reaches out to only about 7% of mm. them. So how are you guys going to reach out to more? Um, over the last four years, we have been reaching out to 100,000 a year. So altogether, we have been reaching out to about almost about 400,000 so, so far. And I, I hope that uh, with uh, this incidence, I think we will see more of our partners coming forward to give us more support. Mm -hmm. And I hope to actually up the uh, outreach from the 100,000 a year to about 150 to 200,000. So uh, I hear that you guys are planning more recreational activities for foreign workers in the coming year. Could you give us an idea, an idea of what's going to happen? Based on the experience that we have over the last few years, I think uh, some of the activities are quite universally accepted because, for example, uh, variety show, movie screening, sports events and so I think we'll continue to do more of those. But at the same time, we'll conduct a survey to understand more of their, uh, what they need and they would like to see uh, that we organise for them to organise more. And they can actually expect more that we will do for them. So uh, there have also been calls for more amenities near the dorms, more recreation centres. Do you hope to see that happen? Oh, yeah, that's something that we have been calling for, for, for the past few years because I think it is important that we can't just build dormitory. While we build dormitory, we have to ensure that all the building plans of dormitory must also inbuilt a plan for recreational uh, facilities mm -hmm. and so to uh, address the social need of the foreign workers. So far, I think we see there are altogether about four such recreation centres in Singapore and we have been working with all the managing agents to provide more activities for the workers we like to see more so you know one last question for you they're here in Singapore they're essentially part of our community as well so what do you foresee we need to do to better integrate them into our society I think integration is one the thing that we must continue to do because we should not take the, the harmonious workplace uh, for granted uh, what we have uh, been doing is that we actually try to also organize some training for them for example uh, our knowing Singapore program which we actually uh, tell them what are the culture, what are social norms okay. and what are the things that they expect. I think in this aspect, besides for the NGO like us to do, uh, we hope that the employers should do more, to provide more training uh, at their own cost to educate all these workers and help the workers to better understand us and integrate with us. So everyone has to play their part. Yes. Thank you very much, Mr. Thank Yeo. You. It's a pleasure speaking to Thank you. Thank you. And that was Mr. Yeo uh, from the Migrant Workers Centre.